Okay, here we're going to look at ecological succession. What this is basically referring to is if we look at the same uh, block area, it will change over time. What we're seeing is initially starting with either a soil-based or a rock-based and progressing to some weedy species, progressing to some grass, maybe some low-growing shrubs, to some mid-growing shrubs, ultimately to tall trees. And it's this kind of transition that occurs to form this forest from something that was originally barren is the process of ecological succession. So let's look at this a little bit more detail. Well, the definition of ecological succession is the replacement of one community by another until a stable stage is reached. Ecosystems do tend to change uh, with time until a stable system is formed. This may occur in a short period of time or extremely long period of time. The key part here is over time. We're transitioning until a stable system is formed. And this stable system will, for will form depending on the climatic limitations. So it doesn't mean that all ecosystems are going to reach the same stable form. That stable form is going to be determined by the climate in which uh, geographic location that we're talking about. So the process, well, it involves three critical concepts. One is tolerance. So we see the picture here. First uh, come our weedy R-selected species that are tolerant of harsh abiotic conditions. So you see the weeds always grow in areas uh, regardless of whether it's good years or bad years. The key part here is they are selected This are selected if you remember, they produce lots of offspring. So they're very tolerant of a variety of conditions because there's so many of them and they have a high degree of genetic variability. Continuing on with facilitation, this is where the habit changes are introduced that favor other less weedy species. So we've gone from just pure weeds to kind of, in this case, development of some flower species. Less weedy and getting more established. We can see there's no barren soil pictured here in the facilitation step. Lastly, here we have inhibition, habitat change that may inhibit the growth of the original species. We have a tall tree growing. This tree is going to produce large leaves. They're going to shade out other um, potential species that were responsible for the establishment of that area. So that's what we talk about when inhibition. The tall tree will inhibit maybe these um, tolerant species or even these uh, less weedy species that started to develop. Now the process of succession. In an ecosystem, mature more case-selected species, remember these produce less offspring, replace the R-selected ones. So species richness and total biomass increase, however net productivity will decrease in this instance. Thus agricultural systems are maintained in early successional stages to keep net high productivity. So what does this kind of mean? Well by tilling an area, monocropping, meaning growing only one crop in long rows, we're actually keeping the system in early succession. Not a lot of room for establishment here. This is because this is very highly productive, at least when planted like this. Case selected species, such as like large oak trees or maple trees, they're going to be a little bit less in the productivity, but they're going to increase that overall biomass. Now, succession occurs because we can see succession occurring over years. So, this climate model shows the movement of the Midwestern prairie climate to the um, forest zone. So, it starts at 1890 and it estimates its progression. So we can see that this area here is progressing its way northward. And again, there is a prediction here. This goes to all the way to 2090. But we can see this overall the progression here is north. And this occurs because each community changes the conditions so they are more favorable for other organisms that replace them. So this changing of conditions is this favoring different organisms in that environment. For example, some type of trees need a lot of sun, and their saplings cannot grow under the shade of their own species. This is an important concept because trees don't want to compete with their offspring. So in this case, if the tree needs a lot of sun, their saplings cannot grow under shade, indicating when the parent species is there, the parent um, specimen is there, the, it will not be competing with its offspring. Lastly, they will be replaced by types of trees whose saplings can grow under the shade of other trees. This is, again, helping determine what kind of species will be living there and how this succession will progress. So let's look at an example here. Well, we have an example of a succession. So primary succession occurs where there is no previous community, such as bare rock or sand. Primary succession begins with pioneer organisms. So this primary is referring to bare rock or sand. Basically, nothing was there. A lava flow would be an example of primary succession or this newly exposed bare rock, we're starting at primary succession. 
These primate organisms can tolerate extreme conditions, extremely hot or extremely cold. Moss, dune grass, and lichens are pioneer organisms. There are some examples. Soil is produced over hundreds of years by these pioneer organisms. These organisms break apart rock, add uh, hummus, they can uh, die and decompose and hold water, and these can allow other organisms to grow. So we see this kind of old rock here, we see some lichens growing. These are algae and or cyanobacteria and a fungus growing together in a mutualistic relationship. The algae make the food because they're able to capture the sunlight and fungus anchor and capture water. So it's a symbiotic relationship there with those lichens. Now secondary succession is when a community is disrupted and succession occurs again. So this disruption could be from fire, could be from farming, um, from foresting. The key part here is the community begins again where a former community was disrupted. There's already a community here. It's being disrupted. It's being reformed. The key part for secondary succession is the presence of soil. So if soil is already present, and we see in these three cases it is, that is an example of secondary succession. Remember, primary starts with bare rock or sand. Now, climax community is the final stage of succession. The same climax community will develop unless abiotic conditions have changed. Climax community will be part of the biome of the area. Our climax community in uh, Connecticut here, Old Hickory Forest, which is part of the temperate deciduous forest biome, is considered a climax community. This is where old forests will um, end up with a high presence of oak and hickory trees. Now, the community is still undergoing succession. So we see the recent 1960s and 1990s, and then projected here. We see that there's this transition or this increase in these um, oak hickory type forests increasing over the area. This map shows the current projected forest types. Major changes are projected for many regions. You can see the big difference here in those maple, beech, and birch trees becoming less predominant, or at least that's what's projected in the year 2070 to the year 2100. As long as the species keeps changing, he, um, here the plants growing under pine trees are not small pine trees, so the species will be changing with as old pine trees fall. So we don't see the same species under the original, we are noticing a change that's occurring. We see that here. So a climax community has been reached when the community replaces itself with more of itself. What does that mean? Well, under sugar maple trees, we will see more sugar maple tree saplings. That's an indication that we've reached the climax community because the original um, specimen is being replaced with the same type. We're not seeing different species under there that will replace that in the future. And this is the conditions that show a climax community, which is the very end of ecological succession for a given area.